guys. So I am back here at my cousin Chris's shop, Cars R Us Auto Body and Crown Rust Control of Omaha. And uh, if you watched a few episodes back, uh, he did some fender flares for me and some rust prevention underneath the flares and some fixing because they were pretty rough. Mike, you got a rough truck. <laughs> yeah, there's not much left under there. And tonight we are going to be uh, prepping and painting some plastic rocker panel covers. So instead yeah. of... So as your one of your subscribers mentioned, he said, mm -hmm. y'all beat me to it, but he was going to suggest these quick covers. And to be honest, your truck, Mike, will be the first one I've ever installed. Really? Before. All right. Perfect this is not really a professional repair. No. It's just a cover up. Mm -hmm. But it may be, you know, there's a time and a place for everything, right? If you can get, you know, a few more right. years of it looking halfway right. decent without and we spending. already did some treatment to the actual metal that's left behind with a rust inhibitor and stuff. Mm -hmm. But these are just really thin plastic uh, mold injected pieces that are designed for your truck, your, your make and model. We'll paint them ahead of time. And then they're held on with some double-sided tape around the edges and some screws on the bottom. And we're gonna, my guys already started prepping on this one. As you can see, they're real glossy, mm -hmm. but that's just the, the, the surface of the part as it came out of the mold, because it's a raw part. So with that, we need to clean them and get that mold release off and use a, a special paste that we use to scuff them. And then we'll use a special adhesive promoter to keep the paint sticking so they don't peel. And we'll get that painted and your new grill painted. And, uh, and tomorrow we'll stop it together. Yeah, we're gonna work on this stuff tonight and then I'll be back in the morning and hopefully we can get everything installed. I have never really done any kind of uh, body work other than rattle canning stuff in my driveway. So this will be new to me. Uh, I was really interested in the process and you know, the paint booth and stuff like that. So it should be a, it should be a good time. We're gonna get into this and I Have guess, fun. yeah, I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> so feel that, it's got kind of a, almost like a polish or a toothpaste-y grit feel to it. Like polishing compound. Yeah, but it's designed to be, uh, <clears throat> so we just wet our deal here. We just want it to not be shiny. We just gotta hit every little part. Yeah, of every little nook and cranny. It's usually those inside quarters that are, that you don't get stuff that's when it's, where it starts to peel. Like Rinse it off and wipe it down. And we're using a gray stuff pad, and gray is less aggressive than a red. So a red stuff pad will put deeper scratches. We're not looking for a deep scratch, we're just looking for a fine scratch. So I think what we'll do is just tape this off for the sake of scuffing it first, and then we'll unmask it and retape it for cleaning. Okay. Just because if you get dust that I don't want to have float out when we're painting. So with this, we're just looking to kind of jam it in there and it's the stuff next to the tape. Yeah. You wouldn't really even. I could have probably done this without unmasking, but I didn't want to. Fine line masking this so we can have a edge that's perfect and we can peel this one last piece of tape off while the clear is still wet and there won't be a hard line it'll settle down and you don't have a risk of the paint peeling you know just like on a house you paint the walls and you mask next to it and paint over it and after it dries you unmask it and it peels a big tears a big mm -hmm. V in it the thing, same thing can happen with cars. So we put this piece of tape on, very last, 
We call it a pull off so that we can pull it off once it's painted. We will wipe it down. We'll try not to handle them that much because that generates static electricity. Mm -hmm. We'll get the adhesion promoter on, sealer on, and then some color on. And then we'll inspect them and nip sand any dirt out we want before we put our last coat of color on and clear it. Okay. When we're clearing, we have no, no uh, recourse then. Once we're still coloring, we can still fix a little spot. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of like paint greaser and everything? Yeah, yeah. black and grease remover. We want to wipe it to clean it and then wipe it to dry. And this gets our fingerprints and any uh, residue from sanding or tape or anything or or the detergent from when we're using the rinse water and stuff. Get all that off before we go start. So that is our waste barrel. Uh, we recycle out of it. That's where all paint and thinner goes that's used to clean guns or any leftover activated material because a lot of our products are catalyzed. So that activated material goes in there as well. And then what happens is the, um, the stuff will settle to the bottom and then we will pump off of the top um, the thinner that's got less gunk in it, we pump it off of the top and I have my recycler over here that we can recycle thinner. Oh, you can reuse it then? Yep, huh. and then recycle it and then all that's left is the gunk in the bottom, stuff that's not pure. It's basically a still. Oh, it boils gotcha. the thinner, it evaporates and goes into the just like a still, <laughs> just like on the moonshiners. It, and it almost smells like that in here too. Yeah, so here's the 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 pot where we pour the mash in and that's what's left is the gunk in the bottom huh. after it's boiled out of there and it, and it goes into there and then we have the, the clean thinner down here right out of the copper pipe huh. <laughs> I had no idea you could reuse that yep so um, we've recycled thinner we've been doing that for a while and um, because there's a hazardous waste removal charge for for these materials mm -hmm. now they're you're charged by the weight of the barrel. Um, companies that don't recycle at all, the, you know, big shops, they may go through a barrel like this a week or every two weeks, you know, um, and they'll pay two or three hundred dollars to have it removed because it's pretty clean thinner overall, you know, it's just mm -hmm. been used once. So as this, you can hear the sediment, is, this barrel is nearly full, it's probably maybe my third or fourth barrel in 20 years. Oh no shit. Yeah. So this barrel will probably, because it's gonna need a crane to get it out of here probably, um, it's probably gonna be three or four thousand dollars to, to dispose of it. it. Yeah, Yeesh. because it's uh, high solids, high solid material rate. Right. You know, the, the solid material rate is the expense, is where that'll come from. So it is what it is, but um, I've saved a lot of thinner. And you know, if you're gonna put a, Put a new barrel in here every three months at three hundred dollars or whatever each. You know, it's, it, it pays for itself in the long run. Mm -hmm. So, so we're going to use the adhesion promoter. And this stuff is clear and very, very thin, very watery, and uh, just takes a light coat. But you can't skip that step. What I don't use, I'll actually put back. It's that doesn't require any activation or anything. <clears throat> Well, and the amount of air 
So I can turn this down to fairly in material at zero degree pattern. You know, that's pretty small. Anything smaller than that, that's when you're using an airbrush to do work. Okay. And because it's a light material, we don't get a lot of flow, so we don't get run or whatever. And that's, that's about right for these jobs. I'm going to do the top half of this rocker, and then I'm going to reach across and do the bottom half of the other one. Okay. System. So this is a white, and this is a gray, and this is a black. So if we're spraying a light color like your white, I'm going to put white sealer down first, and then you have 100% coverage pretty much on first coat. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these colors, especially the more vibrant colors, are quite transparent. When you say, man, that thing looks deep, it is because it's getting a reflection of depth. If you, if you had coverage in one coat, it's not going to look deep. You know, but those colors are hard to get coverage on. I've had some of these reds take eight to 12 coats to get coverage. Dang. So what they want to do is use what they call a value shade system. You have uh, a white, a gray, and a black, and this is considered one, four, and seven. So the value shade is from one to seven. And on these cans, you'll see, you'll have a value shade, VS is a seven. So this is a dark color. We would want to use a seven. Here's the, the white is a value shade of a one, okay? And we'll have a value shade of a four. So that's the gray in the middle. Now, if you had a value shade of a two, you would mix one part of the one, two parts of the uh, okay. gray to get the ones, the two and the three are in between the one and the four, and five and six are in between the five and the seven. It's just a little bit variation of a little bit of each of these. And then those get uh, activated four parts to one with the, re with the activator of the value shade seal. The primer is, has its own designated partner as well, urethane grade primer. And then this is urethane, everything we use is urethane grade today. So, so I've learned you can use a clothespin to hold your stick in place. We're going to do, uh, so there are, some of these sticks, I mean, the, for the painters that aren't, are not good at math, they've got mixing sticks like this, where it'll say, this is a mixing ratio of five to one. So you would pour your first quantity to B and then pour your next quantity to B and that gets you five to one. You know, here's another one that says uh, two to one or four to one. So you would pour your first quantity to a six 
that's your first part and then here you pour to six and that gives you four to one well I'd rather just know that see four I've always one. seen them like that like it's right. a cup or whatever yep. that people use so I just I, ha I this is my favorite it's just graduations there's none of that four to one business but I'll just pour into four and then a one mm -hmm. four or five and then I'll you know if I need a larger quantity you can actually flip it around and get bigger quantities so what I like to do especially if it's a you know a job and I don't know how much it's going to take especially for clear coat and stuff so you don't have a waste I'll pour like a four to one I'll have a quantity of this five and I'll put my first coat on then I'll pour it back in and see how much I actually used oh yeah so if I used two portions of that then I know I've got more than enough to finish the job if I used four portions of that then I would know I needed to mix this quantity of three so I could come over here and mix four to one and then I have very little waste, mm -hmm. you know, it just because that's money you're throwing down the drain. Once it's activated, it's gone. So we're going to mix this four to one. I'm going to do it on the red scale because sealer goes quite a ways. So you can see in there, I poured it up to the four line, the bottom left. And then I'm going to use activator. There's tricks to every trade, right? Mm -hmm. So when I'm doing color and I just need to do a one-to-one, -one, <laughs> you know, you put you put your stick into the can, and it gets wet, and you lift it to that spot, and then you pour it to that part. Oh, that's a genius <laughs> trick. <laughs> You know, it takes all kinds. That I would have never thought of that. <laughs> one to one.
So that just needs to dry about 10 or 15 minutes, and we can start with base coat. 8624. You know, after having this truck now for February, it'll be 12 years I've had it. I'm really ready for something of a different color, but <laughs> it still runs. There ain't no reason to get rid of it, you know? You no. Know, yeah. And my last truck was black. Yeah. And so it's like, I told myself, I'm never going to get another black vehicle. And I got a white one now after 12 years with that. It's like, I could, I could drive a black truck again, black you know? But you know, your, your truck, I mean, every car I've ever owned has been unique by, you know, by design, but it's like, you'll never lose it in a parking lot. No, not mine. <laughs> So this is the base coat, and first time it's going to get a bandana. This lid is just a press fit; it's not sealed. So this will keep any paint from dripping out if it gets past the lid during the paint job. All right, so he's going to slap on the first coat of actual paint. Yes, they look white, but that's just the. So now it's first coat of paint.
See, you're going way heavier than I would have. I'm afraid that I'd make a drip and then I feel really bad about myself. It's all good. for mixing. Clearly this is an empty can from one of these cord activators. Now that trick I was describing earlier about the whole you know one and one kind of thing where mm -hmm. we pour it at one level and then lift it and pour it. Okay. Your viewers are smart viewers, I know. So that will only work on a straight wall can. Oh yeah. If you're using a, a container like this where the walls are wider at the top, that does not fly. Mm -hmm. So a caveat. <laughs> this is a one-to-one -one clear and this is almost an empty gallon so we're going to pour this in and that'll be our A part and it should be just about everything we need for this job and then we're going to use a fast activator bam one-to-one -one. life hack right there life hack indeed so this will be all the clear we need for the job and how many coats of clear do you usually do? We'll put, um, because this is a panel that we're not going to buff, you know, necessarily, mm -hmm. like for flat sand and buff. And also the thicker material is on, the easier it'll chip too. So we're probably going to put two, two decent wet coats of clear on. Okay. Um, we'll, when we're going to wet sand and buff a panel for uh, gloss and for in, uh, vision enhancement, we'll put an extra coat of clear on to have that extra material when we're wet sanding it to remove and not have a risk like if, of it. If you're doing a hood of a car or something. Yeah, the like hood that. or the sides. Typically on most cars, we'll put three coats of clear on of the exterior for buffing. All right, first coat of clear. We can touch this and it, 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 it's not sticky to my finger. So we're ready for a second coat. Man, it will look great. My factory rockers, this whole underside, you can stick your hand through. The grill is looking minty also. Guess I need to get that black bumper in the mail. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> I can. All right, well, Chris is getting everything cleaned up. Um, he said once those kind of dry off enough, you're going to take them out and put them underneath the heater outside, out in the main shop. And then tomorrow morning, I'll be back and we'll put this stuff on along with 
the grill and I've got a passenger door handle that needs replaced. So we've got a few things to do, but uh, it was really fun to hang out and see how this whole process went. Absolutely, Mike, it's been a pleasure. And I got to spray some myself. I, I used yeah. a professional paint gun for the first time in my life. That's a wrap for this evening. Yeah, tomorrow's gonna be a long day too. Yeah. All right, guys, I guess that'll be it for tonight and I will see you in the morning. Stay tuned. All right, well, good morning. It's day two, we are back at the shop and we are gonna start installing stuff. We've got the grill here and we've got the rocker panel covers here uh, and we've got a nice puppy right here. Uh, so I think we're going to start on the grill. The reason I'm replacing the grill, there's a couple of different reasons. One, as you can see on these chrome grills, after a while it starts to peel off. And uh, I've had this truck for 12 years in February, so it's been, it's been through some things. As you can see this little chrome piece here is starting to rust a little bit, but um, we're going to swap that out. The chrome on the bumper is going to look kind of funny. I might plasti dip that for the time being, but eventually I'd like to replace the bumper anyways with something steel and a winch. Uh, we're also going to swap out the door handle here. This door handle has been broken for a while. It's kind of crusty in there. The bolt broke. That was the result of a frozen door and me just pulling on the door handle. With these doors you can grab right here. If your door's ever frozen, pull the door handle and grab the bottom of the door and open it that way. I learned that uh, lesson the hard way. So we're gonna get the, I'm gonna get the grill popped off here. It's not the first time I've taken that thing out. And we're gonna get started on this stuff. Stay tuned, y'all. All right, so uh, a little bit of an issue on this grill is that this is smooth. And I don't know if you guys can see over here on the old grill. Let me grab the camera. It's got a little recess to it right here. But this sits down in. You can see the back of this has a ridge on it. it has that ridge. So it wouldn't sit flush on that grill anyways. So I'm gonna have to figure out a different emblem uh, at this point. I mean, if it didn't have those little holes in it, you could just cut a piece of vinyl out that would fit there, you know? Yeah. Well, I have modified emblems to make them fit before and used some epoxy to glue them on it. Time. The way you would rather have one that sits flush anyway. Yeah, so. it would definitely look better. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I think we can just slap the thing on there. Right. We want to line them all up. And these, these catch over this top edge, so we might have to... I don't even feel like those are on the other one. Yeah, they were kind of right it off. So we can hang that and then get them to line up, so... Shazam! Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Nice. That All right. changes the look of it. It does. So, a little ports. All right, on to step two. You want to try the rockers next? Or are we going to the door handle? Oh, the door handle is low hanging fruit. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and get this door handle swapped out. Uh, I don't think I mentioned it in the beginning, but when I bought the truck, it actually had black door handles on it. It had the chrome grill and everything, but it just had regular black handles. Oh, and it had black mirror caps. And I put the white mirror caps on and I put the chrome door handles on. It just looked a little bit nicer. But I ended up selling the black ones many years ago. 
if I still had them, I'd just swap those in there at this point, but we got an extra chrome door handle and we're gonna get that thing thrown on quick. So, this should come out now. Yeah, so what happened there is the, the there's a metal stud that's glued into the handle and the stud itself got rusty and pulled out of the handle. Good, and it's not loose. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Bingo. All right, door handles on. We're gonna throw the uh, interior door trim back on, and we're gonna get started on these rocker panels, and uh, hopefully those turn out all right uh, with all the crust down there. I'll get you guys a good shot of what those rocker panels look like before we get after it. All right. So here's the driver's side lower rocker and you can see it's pretty rough um, there's some some definite crust and holes as you can see there's a huge hole all the way back right there what do you think of that it's no bueno huh yeah it's full of holes so we'll get that stuff swapped out. I don't think anything, yeah, the insides of them don't look terrible, honestly. It's just the, the bottoms are the worst part, right? My assistant. Okay, so we've kind of got this one started. Striker plates off uh, for the rear door catch. And we've got the interior trim panels removed. And you can see how crusty this rocker is worse than the other side I think I mean it's just it's wrecked I mean look at that Nebraska winters and a bit of neglect is all it takes all right so Chris is cleaning the back side of these uh, covers as you can see the rocker here all those little spots are where you apply uh, double-sided tape and then the bottom is riveted or screwed on I'm glad I can make your Saturday enjoyable. <laughs> You're not filming right now, are you, buddy? <laughs> <A little bit. laughs> You're gonna have to put some bleeps in there pretty soon. Well, we still gotta attach everything under here uh, to bring that lip up, but uh, she looks better already. Look at that, fancy. You can see it kind of tucks up under your front fender. And there's a seam up there that you can't, you won't be able to see. That's the thing is you really don't see any of this once the door's closed. See that little bit right there that he's attaching uh, on the cab corner. But other than that, man, it's looks ten times better already. There you go. Let's see how that closes. Watch. Yeah, you really can't. I mean, other than that little, the seam there, you can't tell at all. And unless you know what you're looking for, you're never gonna notice it. Yeah, so now we'll secure the bottom with uh, rivets, you bet. Yeah, that looks so much better under there, y'all. 
Look at that. All right, Chris is gonna pop some rivets in the bottom of there and I'm gonna get started pulling the other side apart. That is a lot better than a manual one, that's for sure. Done now. Well, passenger side is on. Looks nice. He rivets in there. It's all good. Yeah, it's good to go, isn't it? <laughs> He's still us it's time for some food. <laughs> I thought you were handing me a ratchet. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a saying, it's so many dollars an hour if I do it. So many it dollars more an hour if, I help. if you watch. And then even more if you don't help. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you go to like a, a mechanic shop and it's they give you a price and they give you a price if you started it yourself and they gotta finish it. Yeah, it's a redo, redo. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, I tell you what, some of the, my most appreciative customers are the ones who actually have tried to do shit themselves, mm -hmm. and they know how simple it's not. Oh yeah. It's, it's not any, auto body's not easy. You can definitely get yourself in over your head quickly. When I sold my house out in West O, I was going back and forth to North Work and coming home and mowing on the weekends and stuff, and my neighbors were redoing a blazer, you know, father-son project. And I checked in on them and they were struggling. I said, hey, if you ain't got that figured out, next week I'll come back, I'll help you out, you know. And I came back and got my work done and then I went over there in about 20 minutes. I had done what they couldn't get done in four weeks. It's, that. it's just a technique and knowledge thing. Yeah, the years like, of experience. Yeah, they were like, holy cow. Mm -hmm. A few more rivets and yes, sir. We're good to go. So the key here is if you feel on the back of that, it feels solid. You feel up forward two inches, and it's there with probably a hole like right yeah. here. It's a good hole. That's where the yeah the, that and there was a spot on the other side where. You know how they have it sit forward or rear, mm -hmm. then uh, it was like near the body mount area and it was uh, not going to be where there was a spot anyway. Oh yeah.
All right, y'all. That's basically it. You got to um, trim that one off. Oh, yeah. One rivet didn't pop great. Uh, as you guys can see, my doors are pretty rough, too, so I need to touch that up. Chris suggested using some, like, textured paint that would help against rock chips a little bit better. Can see it back here also. Um, what else do I need to do? Figure out an emblem for the grill. I might stop at like a Napa or, or AutoZone or something because they sometimes have that type of stuff and see if they have something that will fit on there. Otherwise, I'll get something ordered tonight. But I mean, that's about it. Yeah, so now when you open that door, look at how nice that looks. Yeah, you don't see all the crust. Yeah, that looks new. Looks nice. Yeah, buddy. Everything's reinstalled. We got the all the trim put back in here. You can see the the line in here. This covers up the rest of it on the inside and on the front. It's right up here, and that fits underneath the front uh, front fender. So that's it, man. Job well done. I mean, yeah. I'm impressed with the for for what they service what for, what service they provide for the service they provided. They're awesome. <laughs> Awesome Somebody's ready for lunch. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's a cheap way to do it, but it's a whole lot more inexpensive than yeah, you know, I mean, trying to replace everything. So the kits were the the rockers themselves. You can order them online. They're just, you know right in that five hundred dollar range shipped mm -hmm. and then painting them's probably another five hundred bucks. You know, so and installing them. Not quite five hundred bucks, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> if you if you got a thousand or twelve hundred bucks is better than the eight thousand or yeah. more it would take to actually fix it. Right. Yeah, and the truck's not even you no, know it's not, good, worth not, it. Worth it. Yeah. not worth it. Not worth it. So it it should look a little bit nicer for a few years. Um, like I said, I've got more touch up stuff to do. I've got more exterior modifications to do. Uh, bumpers need to be done. All that type of stuff, but. Um, it looks great. The grill looks great. I've been wanting a white grill on this thing since the day I bought it and I never swapped it out. Now you can't buy them anymore, basically, unless you find a used one. And so we sprayed that down, that looks great. Yeah, the chrome strip in the bumper doesn't bother me at all. Like I, I thought I was gonna look at that and be like, I gotta go home and spray that today. Yeah, you, you would think it's out of place is what you thought might be, but it, it looks just fine. I mean, with the chrome headlights, and the headlights and, yeah, yeah, it and plays in just fine. There's enough chrome. It's not the only piece. Mm -mm. Well, guys, I think that's about it. I think I'm going to go ahead and get this video closed out. We're going to do some cleaning up and, and get the dog fed. The dog. Yeah. <laughs> about the last half an hour, he's been pretty vocal that he's hungry. Uh, but big thanks to my cousin Chris for helping me out with this project. Uh, Glad to help. And if you're ever in the Omaha area, or, or wherever, and you need body work done, come on down to Cars R Us Auto Body, and uh, if you need rust protection, crown rust control. Yeah, so we just had a customer uh, that we crowned for at a car, a wreck car, ship, getting shipped here from Des Moines. Oh, dude, you know, they're the body shops in Des Moines? <laughs> I mean, if you do good work, you do good yeah, work, and yeah. you guys can may have seen some cool stuff in the background of the videos, but, you know, what is that, a Studebaker you said back there? Yep. So a Studebaker. Studebaker gasser, there's an MR2 in the corner, a nice square body, uh, so he does some good stuff around here, but yeah, I'm going to get the video closed out, and uh, go follow these guys on Facebook, I'll leave their uh, links down in the description below. And stay tuned for the next adventure. I'll see you in a bit.